Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be talking about PowerShell execution policy. So we're just going to go over really what that is and the different types of execution policies. Now, this is typically a video that you would definitely want to watch at the beginning of your PowerShell career, but I've noticed that I haven't really made a specific video on execution policy. So here it is for anyone that actually wants to learn exactly what is the PowerShell execution policy. So first off, the execution policy is definitely um, not a security system by Microsoft and Microsoft does say this in the execution policy documents. This is not at all meant for security. So setting it to restricted is not going to be really for security, but it's more to just prevent an accidental mistake on the user's behalf from potentially violating something unintentionally. That is the true purpose of a PowerShell execution policy. So by default, on a Windows server, um, you're going to have remote signed as your execution policy. And on Windows clients, you're going to have it as restricted. Now, again, I haven't gone over what those are, but that's just the default settings. So what we're going to have is we're going to start with the Windows clients first being restricted. So what restricted is, is that's the default one for Windows client computers. So that would be like Windows 10, Windows 11, anything like that. Now it will allow you to execute PowerShell commands, but will not allow you to run scripts. So if we actually go ahead and I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, give me one moment. Let me just uh, go to some scripts here real quick. I believe that my scripts are in here. And then let's go in. I believe it's in documents. And I believe it is going to be an execution policy. Perfect. So what I'm going to have doing here is I'm going to actually show you guys what all the different execution policies are. So as you can see in this, I do have a script called script.ps1. And right now, my execution policy, if we do get execution policy, we can see that my execution policy is uh, remote signed. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's do a set execution policy. And the execution policy we want to set to is restricted. So this is typically the default that you would have for your Windows machines. We can see that I am now restricted. So if I try to go and run this script.ps1, I'm going to get an error saying cannot be loaded um, because of the execution policy. So that is fine here. Um, so as you can see in this little smaller window here it might actually work better for us. Um, so the script cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on the system. And that's because the execution policy is set to restrict it. So we can't run any type of scripts but if we just do a get service, you're going to see that the get service does work. So it does allow you to run commands, just not scripts. And that includes module files or even PowerShell profiles as well. Now, the other, the opposite end of that would be unrestricted. So if we go ahead and we just set our execution policy to unrestricted. Now this is the one that I would recommend by far the least because um, this again gives you zero protection. So if we try to run the script, we're going to see, look at me, I'm a script running. So we know that the script has ran. So unrestricted is also the default for non Windows computers. So if you're installing PowerShell on Linux or Mac, this will be the execution policy by default and you cannot change them. Uh, so just be aware, you can run any type of scripts. They don't have to be signed or anything like that. 
The next one up here is remote signed. So that's the execution policy that is default on Windows servers. So scripts can run, but they need to be signed if they are coming from, if they are downloaded from the internet or anything like that, they do need a digital signature. But if it is a script that you wrote on the server or on a local computer, you do not need that signature. Scripts will still be able to run and you can still run scripts that are downloaded from the internet as long as you unblock them. So there are some risks here because you can still run unsigned scripts. So if we do that here, if we do the set execution policy remote signed, I can still run this script because it is a script that I wrote locally. If it's a script that you download from the internet, you'll just have to unblock it if it's something that you trust, or if it is a signed script like most modules that you download from the PowerShell gallery, those will be fine as well. Now there are two more. There is the bypass execution policy. Now there, nothing is blocked. There's no warnings, no prompts, no nothing. This is typically used for applications that are maybe based on PowerShell. Um, so that would just be the set execution policy. And you can set that to bypass. And once again, we can run the script, no problem. The other one, the last one is all signed. So this one will, um, all scripts can run as long as they are uh, signed by a trusted publisher. And that includes your local scripts. So if we do set execution policy, execution policy is going to be all signed. And we go ahead and we try to run that script. We get that it cannot be loaded because it is not digitally signed. You cannot run the script on the current system. So these are all the different execution policies that you could have. So we saw all signed, bypassed, remote sign, restricted, and unrestricted. Now there are also undefined that you'll see as well. Um, effectively, those are restricted for Windows clients and remote signed um, for Windows server. If all the execution policies are undefined, it would just go back to the defaults. Now there are other commandlets here. If we try to run the get execution policy and we do a list here, you will actually see a list of all the different execution policies for the different scopes. And they are in order of precedence. So the top is the most precedent. So that would be the order zero or order one. And then it goes down from there. So as you can tell, the local machine right now is set to all signed. But if I go ahead and just change that from all signed back to remote signed, and we get the list, we can see that it is changed. The current user would be what it is for my user. So I don't have one set, but I can definitely set the execution policy. For the execution policy, I'm gonna put it to all signed and I'm gonna make it to a scope of current user. And now if I try to run that script, I'm gonna get blocked and the reason being is as we can tell in the list, the current user is a higher precedence than the local machine. So now all of my PowerShell execution will be based on this current user. And then there is process, and that will be on the actual process itself. Now you might be wondering, how would I actually get that? That is actually if you open up a run box here, and you type in PWSH or PowerShell, depending what version of PowerShell you have, PWSH would be if you have uh, PowerShell 7 installed, or if you just type PowerShell, that would be for PowerShell 5.1. And then you type, uh, do a dash execution, and then restricted, or any other policy you have. If I click OK here, and we zoom in here, and we do get, execution policy we see that it's restricted and if i do a list here 
you can see that now we have a process which is restricted, which is again higher than the user. And as you can tell, it couldn't even load in my PowerShell profile that I have. So now if we go ahead and we try to run these scripts here, we're gonna see that they can't be loaded because it is disabled. We don't get the error that it's not signed because the process is higher precedence over the current user. And then there is user policy and machine policy. These come from your group policy objects or your GPOs coming from the user GPO or the machine GPO, which would be the highest precedence. Now, that being said, let's go back to this window here. And let's just go and let's set the execution policy to undefined for the scope of current user. And if we get the list here, we can see that I am back to normal. So that is really the execution policy in a nutshell. And if you did want to set the machine or user policies, you could easily find those here in the group policy editor. If you go into the computer configuration, administrative templates, windows components, then all the way down here, there's a windows PowerShell. You can turn on script execution and you can set these to only allow signed scripts, allow local scripts and remote signed scripts, or allow all scripts. So I have it not configured right now. And that is the computer one. You can find the exact same one in the user configuration. If you go into user configuration, um, system, I believe it was system. If it was a uh, Windows components, I apologize. Windows components, and then scroll all the way down, Windows PowerShell, and there you have your turn on script execution. So that is how you can set it via those GPOs, and just a little bit more details on that execution policy. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys why Microsoft only recommends this to be to prevent accidental execution of scripts and not as a security fashion because you will see that it is very easy to bypass this execution policy. Hopefully that gives you guys a bunch of details on the execution policy. And if maybe if you've had some run-ins with the execution policies blocking your execution of scripts, this will maybe help you understand a little bit why and maybe how to configure your systems correctly or how to run your scripts, or maybe you'll be tempted to sign your scripts a bit more. This way you can just avoid the execution policies and make sure that you're not running any malicious code by accident. If you guys have any commandlets or anything that you guys would like me to check on these quick tip videos, please let me know below in the comment section. I will do my best to do all of them to benefit the community. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.